put up there of the problems in the Labour Party. Let's uh, open this out now and uh, speak to Jonathan Sacerdotti. He's a journalist and one of the founders of the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism. He no longer works for the organisation. And also to Geoffrey Alderman, historian who's written numerous books about the history of Jews in the UK. And to Katie Cyan, a sociology lecturer at York University, specialising in racism. Um, Jonathan, I wonder if I could start with you. Um, it's been widely assumed that all forms of racism exist within the far right of politics, but it's now being suggested that the left has issues with anti-Semitism too. Where has that come from? I don't think it's actually anything particularly new, and it hasn't just happened under the recent leadership of Jeremy Corbyn of the Labour Party. Jeremy Corbyn, previous to that, was a fairly unimportant political figure, a backbencher who often rebelled against his own party in the mainstream of left-wing opinion. Uh, but he was always somebody that has been engaging with some very unsavoury characters. And I think that when we see those uh, events that he appeared at and even organised coming out in the news at the moment, we can see that it dates back many, many years. It's not just him, of course. There have also been plenty of other examples in the Labour Party, whether it was Naz Shah with her anti-Semitic online comments that she acknowledged were anti-Semitic, uh, whether it's been Labour councillors posting caricature images of hook-nosed, bloodthirsty Jews, uh, whether it's been uh, all sorts of these things going on. Uh, we know that the far left has often had some very worrying anti-Semitic tendencies. The problem now is that Jeremy Corbyn in charge as one of their own seems to be letting this all go in the party and it means that that's a sort of open season. Well I wonder if we can broaden this out a little bit from the Labour Party to the sort of ideas of anti-Semitism, quite where they come from, because there's often quite a conflation of anti-Semitism with anti-Zionism, isn't there? Can you explain just quite simply what the difference is? Well, Zionism is the belief, in short, that the Jewish people have a right to national self-determination, their own country, in their historic homeland of Israel. Uh, some would even argue within the Jewish community that to oppose that is anti-Semitic. Certainly, I think you could say that if you grant other peoples the right to their own national homeland, it does seem suspect when you deny it to Jews, especially when you add the recent history of the Jewish people where over six million of them were wiped out uh, in the Holocaust. And that means that there was an even more pressing need for them to have their own homeland where they could protect themselves. Now, to talk about anti-Zionism, it's usually a phrase at the moment misused, I would say, to mean anti the policies of a particular government of Israel. That's not usually restricted to the current government. Those who say they're anti this government's policies have usually been anti more or less every policy of the state of Israel. And it's worth keeping Israel in our minds when we think about this, because a lot of the current anti-Semitism is either hidden behind uh, criticism of Israel, but it's so angry and aggressive that it's clear that Israel is not all that's there in, at play, uh, or it's motivated by a very skewed image of Israel, a liberal democracy in the Middle East, which does have pluses and minuses like any country, but is based on values similar to our own. Okay. Can I bring in Katie Cyan here? Uh, Katie, sociology lecturer at York University. You've been listening to what uh, Jonathan uh, Sacerdotti had to say. You study racism. That, that, that's your, part of your profession. How big an issue do you think that anti-Semitism is uh, within the whole spectrum of hate politics across the UK? Within the whole spectrum of hate politics in the UK, um, I don't think it's um, as bad as um, has been made out. I think what's remarkable is actually the way in which um, the same discussions are just not being had about things like um, Islamophobia, for example. We've seen murders, um, acid attacks, um, Punish a Muslim Day, um, and statistics are frequently showing a sharp rise in the number of um, kind of uh, anti-Muslim um, incidents. So um, I think also, I don't even want to just exceptionalise Islamophobia, we've seen a rise of anti-migrant rhetoric, um, anti-refugee rhetoric. What about Romophobia, the largest um, and most invisible group of racism in this country? We've seen a surge of anti-black racism um, in this country with students being harassed, black students being harassed on um, campuses, and of course, um, systematic um, racist police violence. So I wouldn't want to accept 
exceptionalise um, anti-Semitism and at the same time I'm not denying um, anti-Semitism. But I think um, it's important that we actually um, look at racism as a whole and I think um, that uh, is not being um, talked about enough or discussed enough. I don't think it's um, right to just exceptionalise one form of racism over another. This country has a huge problem with racism I that's I concerning I all groups. I'm um, sorry, and sorry that to, needs to be addressed. Sorry to butt in, but I wonder then why you think anti-Semitism gets so much airtime. Um, I think it gets so much airtime because of um, Corbyn um, and his historic um, kind of uh, support for Palestinian um, rights. So it's part of a much wider political project, um, which is to essentially um, silence any critique um, of the Israeli um, state expansion. OK, um, I think given that Jeremy Corbyn is being brought up uh, by people here, I should say that the Labour Party says that uh, Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party are fully committed to the support, defence and celebration of the Jewish community and its organisations. And the next Labour government poses no threat of any kind whatsoever to Jewish people. Um, Jeffrey Alderman, can I bring you in here to get a slightly wider perspective? I mean, Jews have been part of British society for um, centuries, haven't they? Um, has anti-Semitism been part of society for as long as that? Anti-Semitism has been part of British society for as long as Jews have been in this country. I in medieval times, it was the blood libel, of course. The, the, outrageous the blood libel is what? Yeah. The outrageous suggestion that Jews murder Christian children on the eve of the Passover festival in order to use their blood for the baking of, un baking of unleavened bread. Jews were readmitted, the Jews were expelled in 1290. They were readmitted under Oliver Cromwell. And I take the long view of anti-Semitism here. You can look at radical movements, labor movements before the Labour Party was formed. And you can see a visceral anti-Jewish prejudice, which was grounded in a critique of capitalism. Uh, uh, radicals such as uh, William Cobbett, the Chartist movement, for goodness sake, the Trades Union Congress in the 1890s blamed Jews for having given birth to an oppressive capitalist industrialization in Britain, which was uh, oppressing the downtrodden working classes. Okay. And I have to say that it's in Labour's DNA, it's in its blood. It's been multi Zionism. And incidentally, I think it's an outrageous suggestion to say that all this has been got up in order somehow to get rid of Jeremy Corbyn or to do down the Labour Party. Well, I wanted to ask if it it's also outrageous. has something to do with the actions of the Israeli government. Well, well you, you know, you can criticise it. I criticise the Israeli government in public. But that, that, that's fine. But one of the, defini one of the examples of, of anti-Semitism that the Labour's National Executive Committee left out of, of, of its code of conduct was the allegation that Jews are somehow loyal to a supranational Jewish agenda which transcends their loyalty to the country of which they happen to be citizens. That is classic anti-Semitism. Uh, Jonathan, I mean, you've been, you, you were taking issue with the things that um, Katie Sion was saying. Do you not accept that for some people it's the actions of the Israeli government that they are, that they are protesting against? Well, Katie, with due respect, is a fine example of part of the problem of what many Jews in this country are feeling. She said yeah. that there's no reason to exceptionalise Jew hatred because we should take it as a whole with all forms of racism and she then listed some others but she then illustrated perfectly something which is very unusual about anti-semitism compared to other racisms we don't often hear that when Roma people say that there is anti-Roma sentiment or black people say that there is anti-black sentiment that they're only saying it to manipulate international politics or the uh, potential future leader of the Labour Party she actually said those she said not those exact words she said that you asked her what the reason was for the coverage that anti-Semitism is getting and she said words to the effect that it is there because there is a movement against Jeremy Corbyn and that side of and, and to silence discussion over his views of Israel. Now that in itself is anti-Semitic because when you take a minority group who in extreme force and unusual unity in this country have said that
that they feel that there is an existential problem for them. That were Jeremy Corbyn to become Prime Minister, many of them, and this is no exaggeration, are currently discussing the prospect of having to leave the country. When those people are in that situation, and you then say, actually, you're not allowed to say that, we think you're trying to manipulate international discussion, that is anti-Semitic. I'm just going to have to give Katie Sion a final uh, right of reply to that. Katie, you heard what was said there. I mean, I'd argue that bigotry, violence, harassment, abuse, hatred and systematic oppression enshrined through laws and policies directed at Jews for simply being Jews is anti-Semitic. To critique um, uh, Israel's settler colonial state is not anti-Semitic. Let me put it another way. Currently, India is governed by an ultra-nationalist party led by Modi. It exercises all kinds of atrocities on minority groups who are systematically abused and violated on a daily basis. Critiquing these appalling state practices does not make me anti-Hindu. In other words, it's not racist to call out abhorrent violence and enacted by the state that, on ever. minority groups. Never argued To that. argue otherwise is to actually legitimise well the oppressor. Well read from your talking points, but I I have never argued that you didn't listen to what was said. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Katie, Jonathan, Jeffrey, thank you all very much thank indeed. You.